I would like to welcome you to lecture 21 of uh, 2FH3. We'll discuss in this lecture the forces uh, due to magnetic fields, forces affecting charges, forces affecting wires, and how um, do wires affect one another. Um, and we cover here chapter 8 from the book of Sadiko, pages 331 to 343. Um, in, the, in the earlier part, when we discussed the electrostatics, we, uh, we became aware that the um, force affecting uh, an electric charge in an electric field is F equal to QE. So both of the charges will drift in the same direction of the electric field and, uh, and negative charges drift against the electric field. And uh, we agreed also that there will be a drift velocity, this drift velocity related to the mobility of the charges. Something similar happens here when we put a charge in, um, in inside the, in, within a the, the effect of a magnetic field. Um, the charge actually starts to experience uh, some sort of a force only if it is a moving charge. This is one fundamental difference from electrostatics. Magnetic fields affect only moving charges. They do not affect static charges, so the charge has to be moving. So we're talking here about currents. Um, and it can be shown that, uh, that the force affecting a magnetic um, a, a charge, a moving charge, equal to Q, U cross B, where Q is the value of the charge, U is the velocity vector of the charge, so it includes the magnitude and direction of the movement of the charge, and B is the magnetic field. So the charge is moving in a magnetic field, and, the, and this magnetic field affects the charge by a force. Uh, notice that this magnetic force is normal to both the, mo the direction of movement of the charge and the direction of the magnetic field because the cross product of two vectors gives you another vector that's normal to their plane. This means that the magnetic force do not, does not exert any work because it is normal to the direction of movement of the charge. Uh, we call this law here Lorentz force uh, for Lorentz magnetic, magnetic force law. Uh, and if we combine both the electric field, the magnetic field uh, or magnetic force expression, which is Newton, with the electric field expression shown here, we get the total force affecting a charge in the presence of an electric and magnetic field. So the total, the total force is equal to the electric force plus the magnetic force. The electric force is equal to QE and the magnetic force is equal to QU cross B. And, of course, the magnetic force will have a value only if u is non-zero. Notice that uh, for this expression, if we, if we know the mass, the mass of a particle, then we can express the force as uh, m equal uh, m multiplied by du by dt. So uh, the force is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration. And then we can try to solve this equation here. So m d, du by dt is equal to the applied force and then we can get the trajectory of the movement of a charge in electric and magnetic field. Let's consider an example here. Uh, we have an electron uh, with a charge of minus 1.602 to the minus 9, 19 column. is moving along a copper wire due to an electric field E equal to 1 kilovolt per meter. So we have an electric field applied to a copper wire then electrons will move again, move, uh, move against the electric field, um, and the mobility of this electron is mu electron 0 0.0032 meter squared per volt second. The wire is immersed in a magnetic field B equal to 12 Tesla. Tesla is Weber's equivalent to Weber's per meter squared. It is a unit of measurement of the uh, of the magnetic field, uh, magnetic uh, field, um, magnetic flux density. Uh, so the magnetic, usually when you talk about the magnetic field, either they give B or they give H. But here, this is really B given here, magnetic flux density. And B is normal to the wire. It's orthogonal to the direction of the wire. We'd like to find the strength of the magnetic force exerted on the electron. So we have an electron. It's moving inside the wire under the effect of an electric field, but it's also immersed in a magnetic field of 12 Tesla. And we would like to get the uh, total uh, magnetic force uh, exerted on this wire, on this electron. We start as usual by drawing a simple diagram of this problem. Um, and I, I here draw the, this is the, um, I start by drawing the copper wire. This is a copper wire here. I assume it is in the x direction. Um, uh, I assume this direction of the, of the wire, this is a wire. And this is, sorry, the magnetic, the electric field applied to it. 
So I assume the electric field is 1 kilovolt in this direction, the x direction. And as a result, the electron which is inside this cover wire will start to drift against the electric field. So it is moving in the minus x direction. The, uh, the magnetic field was given to be normal to the wire. So I took the magnetic field to be out from the page uh, in the y direction here. And uh, using this coordinate system, then Z will be pointing uh, downward in the shown direction. So these are the three coordinates. This is X, this is Z, and Y is coming out from the page. We start to put all the information that we need. In order to calculate the magnetic force, we need to know the velocity of the movement of the electron. And the velocity of the movement of the electron is caused by the applied electric field. So we put everything together. The electric field is in the x direction. It is 1 kilo, kilovolt uh, per meter in the x direction. So it's in this direction here. The drift velocity of an electron is equal to minus mu E multiplied by E. Remember, an electron drifts opposite to the electric field. And this is why I added this negative sign. So, uh, so the, the mobility is minus 0 0.0032 multiplied by 10 to the power 3. This will give us Ax. This is the expression for the mobility, for the, for the drift velocity of any particle. If I know its mobility and I know the applied electric field. Now, once I have the drift velocity, it is equal to minus 3.2 Ax. It's drifting opposite to the electric field. Then we can start to apply uh, Lorentz uh, expression to get the total force, total mag the magnetic force affecting this field. The magnetic force is equal to Q uh, multiplied by the drift velocity cross B. The charge of this electron is minus 1.602 to the minus 19. The drift velocity is minus 3.2 Ax, and it is immersed in a magnetic field in the Y direction out from the page, which has a value of 12, so it's 12 Ay. Now, negative sign will cancel with the negative sign. Ax cross Ey gives Az. So, uh, the number will be 12 by 3.2 by 1.6, which will give you 61.44 uh, to the minus 19. Ax cross Ey will give us Az, and this is Newton. So, this is a force affecting this uh, electron. So, you can see the electric field resulted in the, in the, in the velocity of the electron and uh, once the electro electron starts to move then the, it, uh, it will also experience magnetic field um, due to its movement within this magnetic field, Ex experience magnetic force due to its movement within the magnetic field. We move one step forward to discuss the force affecting wires and uh, how we go from uh, Lorentz law to drive this, uh, this case what we will do we'll consider here a small charge um, it is. It is actually. It's. It's a charge of value dq. So um, it has a value here of dq. It's. It's moving. It's. An, it's a volume, and the whole volume is really moving in a in a certain direction with a velocity of u. And when you get something like this, when you get charges moving, then you have current. We'll assume that the cross section here is equal to ds, and we'll assume that the length of this segment here is equal to dl. So uh, we start by uh, Lorentz law. Uh, for the force affecting uh, a charged particle. Uh, we could see here, this magnetic force is equal to Q, U cross B. Uh, but if we consider this charge here, it's a small charge, we, we treat it like, a, like, a, like a, a point charge, then we can consider that this DQ here is equal to rho V dV. It has certain volumetric charge density in this volume. This is a whole volume, this is dV. dV is nothing but dS multiplied by dL. Then I can simply replace uh, this Q here by the charge of this tiny volume element, which is equal to V dV. And the whole volume is moving at, uh, with a velocity of U. So this still applies. And then we start to, uh, to partition things in a different way. If you multiply rho V by U, uh, we discussed this earlier, that when you multiply the volumetric charge density, of, um, of moving charges by their velocity, you get the current density in ampere per meter squared. So this product here, rho V multiplied by U, gives you a current density. So this whole product here becomes equal to JDV, to the, to the, volu to the, vol to the uh, volumetric current density multiplied multiply by the volume. But this volume, D volume, as we agreed, is equal to DS multiplied by DL, so this is how we expand it. We expand the D volume to DS multiplied by DL. 
Now when we multiply j by ds, j is uh, is the is the current density. It's moving in the same direction. When we multiply it by the by the cross section here, you get the current i because this is this is ampere per meter squared. When you multiply it by meter squared, you get amperes. So this result, this whole formulation here results in i dl. So in the original expression, we can replace dq multiplied by u by i dl, where dl is a unit is a unit uh, unit length or a differential length in the direction of the of the current. So now we know if we have a wire, and this wire is carrying a current i, and it has a length of dl, then the magnetic force affecting this wire is equal to i dl cross b, i dl cross b. So this law here is a very important law. It's called the Ampere's force law or Ampere's motor equation. Actually, the theory of uh, of, of magnetic motors um, are based on this equation. It shows that when you have a current flowing in a wire, and this wire is inside a magnetic field, then this wire will experience force, and this wire can start to move if you allow it to move. So this is really the, fun the fundamental equation in the theory of electric motors. So this law here states that a current element dl carrying a current i in a magnetic field b experiences a force normal to both the current and the magnetic field. Notice here that the direction of the force is, is in the direction of dl across b, which is normal to both the direction of the current i and the direction of b. So this is really the expression here for Ampere's force law. This figure here illustrates a simple electric motor um, and uh, you can build a, such a motor very easily using a magnet and one wire. Uh, you have here a magnet, uh, you have the north pole, the south pole, outside the magnet, the flux lines, magnetic flux lines are moving from the north pole to the south pole. Okay, so this is the direction of B here, it's going in this direction. You have a, a wire, a piece of wire, you put it within this magnetic field and you connect it to a battery. And of course, there's a finite resistance. Uh, this battery will result in a magnet in an electric field in the wire, and then electrons will start to drift against the electric field, um, resulting in a current from the positive uh, terminal to the negative terminal. So you have a current I flowing in the wire, and now when we apply the equation for the uh, for the motor, if we take the cross product between the direction of the current, which is this one here, and the direction of the magnetic field you will see that you get a force trying to move the wire downward in the third dimension. So this force here is normal to both the direction of the wire and the direction of the magnetic field and in, this, in the direction of the cross product between the current and the magnetic field. So the current DL will have to be first. DL cross B will give you this direction pointing downward here. So this equation is so fundamental in the theory of electric motors and it can be used to explain uh, how many of the electric motors work. Now let's consider an example on the uh, Ampere's uh, motor equation. We have here um, a magnetic field B equal to 0.5 is it Tesla and Tesla as I said is Weber's per meter squared. It's a unit of, of measuring the uh, magnetic flux density vector B and sometimes you refer to it as magnetic field. But the symbol, whether it's B or H, will tell you what, what is meant by that, and the units, of course. So uh, we have this magnetic uh, flux density vector B, um, and this is due to a magnet with flat poles, so the magnetic field is assumed to be uniform. Uh, we would like to know the force exerted on a piece of wire that has a current of 2 amperes, it has a length of 10 centimeters, and the, this piece of wire is oriented in, uh, in the direction of the unit vector a y plus a z over square root of two. So uh, the wire is oriented in the uh, in the parallel to the y z plane, and it's carrying a current of two amperes, and it is put and it's put in the within a magnetic field that's pointing in the z direction. And would like to know the expression or the value of the force affecting this wire. We start as usual by drawing a simple diagram. So here you could see this is I draw the x y and z coordinates. This is the direction of the wire, it is in the y z plane, and I will assume for simplicity it goes through the origin, it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, it's carrying a current of 2 amperes, and uh, this is the direction of the magnetic field, it's 0.5 tesla, and it's pointing in the z direction. So because there is a current, and it's put in a magnetic field, it will experience some force. 
now we would we start to apply the, uh, the expression for the um for the uh, Ampere's, law, Ampere's motor equation and we have to take into account that this is not a differential element so we have to integrate all the forces affecting every element of this wire so this wire um, we have to do an integration to get the total force so the unit element along that wire this wire is in the D is in the is parallel to the YZ plane actually I assumed here it's in the YZ plane then DL is equal to DY AY plus DZ, DZ AZ as I explained earlier, dL in general in, uh, in, in Cartesian coordinates is dx ax plus dy ay plus dz az. But because this wire is totally in the yz plane, then it doesn't have any dx. There is no change in x along this wire. So dx is zero. Now we apply the law. We say that the force affecting this wire is the, is the sum of all the forces affecting every differential element of this wire. Uh, this is this is Ampere's motor equation. Um, I is equal to 2 Ampere. The wire is pointing in the dy ay direction plus dz az direction. So this is dl here. And this is cross b. b is equal to 0.5 az. Okay. So notice that the az cross az will give us 0. ay cross az will give us ax. So we know now that this wire will experience a force in the x direction. So the force is actually, if you try to blot it or try to show it, it's trying to push the wire in this direction, trying to push it in the direction of x. It's trying to push it normal to both the current and the magnetic field. Now, um, if, you, if you simplify things a little bit, dy, uh, ay cross az will give us ax. Uh, 2 multiplied by 0.5 will give us 1. Then you are integrating dy over the wire. But remember, if this is if this wire has a length of 0.1, then y will change from zero up to 0.1 over square root two because this one, this the angle uh, that's made here, the angle that you have here, theta, is 45 degrees. So just keep in mind when you are doing your integral along y, uh, y. Uh, maybe I can try to draw it for you here. So this this distance here. When you integrate over y, this distance here is nothing by 0.1 over the square root of 2. This is why I integrated y from 0 up to uh, from 0 up to 0 0.1 over the square root of 2. And dy, this will give us y. So the answer will be 0 0.0707 ax newton. So the force, magnetic force affecting this wire is in the x direction. Its value is 0 0.0707 uh, newton here.